YouTube. All right, so we are now live on TikTok as well as YouTube here, and we're gonna wait a couple moments just so people are uh, coming into our live before we start, but uh, we will be starting very, very shortly for our daily crypto market update. All righty, let's get this recording started. Got a few people on TikTok, no one on YouTube yet, but it is okay. This is going to be posted on the YouTube. Also, if you are on our live and would like to ask a question, we are answering all questions at the end of the video. So if you would like to uh, ask a question regarding uh, some news topics that we're going to be covering today, some TA and price action that we're going to be covering today, definitely... Uh, either message me or just comment down below on TikTok or on the YouTube and we'll be able to answer it. So let's get this started right now. Let's go on the news right here. Actually, I'm just going to show this. Hello traders, welcome to another crypto market update. We got a jam packed video for today. We're gonna go over some news topics. We got four different news topics uh, kind of bundled into two sections. And then we're gonna go into the price action of Bitcoin and then going over the altcoins BNB, which is Binance Coin, XRP, Link, Ethereum, and EOS. So that is gonna be the video for today. Let's jump right into it and go into the news articles of the day. So first one is going to be uh, the two possible outcomes. This is gonna kind of tie into the rest of the discussion that we're gonna have for our first part of the news article. And uh, it's this man, Daniel Jeffries, who's a futurist, and he shares his opinions on what the future could be for a potential blockchain-based world and more of a government-run authoritarian role and, and we'll kind of go into the two uh, possibilities in this blog post. So two possible outcomes. Uh, and let's just talk about this right here. In one particularly dark scenario, this is the first outcome, the global economy will plunge into a severe recession, basically a depression, and countries will turn to authoritarianism in order to survive. Basically, this is huge government controlling almost all aspects of the economy. Um, you know, this is the worst of the worst in terms of being able to be free and, you know, provide for yourself. This is the complete opposite of that. Uh, everyone's the same. Everyone gets, you know, a basic level of income and, you know, there's the government and then there's the rest of the people. And um, in my personal opinion, uh, this is really dangerous and it's not a positive outlook uh, in any way, shape or form. You want the freedom and that's what people fight for. Uh, he stated governments will swiftly move to destroy all centralized exchanges and all local Bitcoin operations. Then how much is your crypto worth? It's worth nothing. So if governments do go and uh, create this situation, yeah, they could have the possibility of taking cryptocurrencies away from the public. They've taken gold and silver away from the public before. It has happened. So don't think it is impossible, especially when there is very challenging times in, a, in an economy. Uh, the quote that will be shared all over will be, it's for the greater good of the economy of the country. And um, that's the play that they're going to have in order to try to basically take all your freedoms is uh, you lose this, but it will benefit the greater uh, society in which you live in, which in my opinion is not true. People deserve their privacy, their freedom, and uh, they should not have big government take control of every facet of their life. I completely disagree with uh, big government in my personal opinion. Uh, so we can see right here, in fact, according to Jeffries, Bitcoin is still in an early alpha technology. And an alter in an alternate scenario, a COVID-19 introduced global crisis could also accelerate innovation, pressuring crypto to evolve into a complete ecosystem which offers goods and services on a large scale and not, quote, uh, and, quote, not just money. And uh, he expands on this and say, and quotes, you have to think about it at a macro scale. You have to think about buyers and sellers. You have to think about the average user. Would you need, you would need to think about alternative distribution mechanisms at scale, and scale, sorry, not at scale, and scale. It's not enough to solve just one of these problems. You have to solve all of them in order to build a robust community. 
Uh, yeah, very true. And here is another quote from Jeffries. And this is more of the positive side. We can see um, the idea that you could build a decentralized consensus system without a centralized power behind it and that you could make a system work over a significant period of time. This is his quote um, when he got asked, uh, what is the value, where the value of Bitcoin resides in? This is the value. Is It, it could build a decentralized consensus system without a centralized power behind it. And uh, that is high value in of itself. Last thing we're going to talk uh, touch on is the world is well prepared for COVID-19. I don't know about that. Let's continue reading. Jeffrey's forecast is overall optimistic. He pointed out that the world is better prepared than ever to face a global pandemic. In particular, communication technologies allow us to spread vital information for fighting COVID-19 at the speed that was unthinkable in the past. The global supply chain also provides many countries with the materials and goods that they need to face such crises. And the last quote that he says, uh, Jeffries, our interconnectedness, while it certainly spreads the virus quickly and accelerates it, it also creates a response, uh, this, the response in our ability to coordinate information at a global scale in a way that has never happened in the past. So uh, he is shedding light on both positives and negatives, uh, which is really great. But um yeah, let's really hope that it's, it's the more positive side. I do think it is the more positive side. I think that blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and this disruptive technology will have positive outcomes from what we're currently seeing right now. I think that uh, the difficulties of the current financial system is emerging right now. For example, look at the difficulties of just sending $1,200 from uh, the government to uh, individuals within a country. Uh, that's, a, that's a huge process if you're looking at it from the traditional system, but if you restructure and basically, uh, you know, update the entire network, uh, it will be a lot easier. If you implement blockchain into the system, uh, it will be very, very easy to send value from the government to the people, but uh, with this current system, very, very challenging. A lot of fees, banks get... Um, in the way really and uh, really slow down the process. But uh, yeah, I, I find it very interesting. So I thought that was a good way to start our first news topic. So the next topic we're gonna go to kind of goes in hand in hand. Um, and this is how the pressure of the coronavirus may open the door for tokenization. Uh, and this is kind of going off of what we saw for the second half. So this is more of the optimistic side of what could potentially be going on if this pandemic continues. So we, before going into this, we know that uh, right now, governments are basically offering loans to small businesses to continue operation. But these are loans. The, the restaurant, whatever, the, the company has to pay back the loan uh, at some point in time, meaning that they have to reduce the investment within the business and pay off that loan, uh, thus not increasing the profitability, efficiency of the business and having to pay off the debt incurred from the previous loan taken out uh, through this pandemic. So it's not re really a help. It may bridge the gap, but they won't bounce back because now they have even larger amounts of debt that they need to pay off sooner or later, right? It, it's still a debt. So they have to take uh, profits from today and pay back what they missed, uh, you know, like a month ago, two months ago or whatever. You're taking prosperity away from tomorrow and, and helping you out today. So it's not going to be as prosperous in the future. Uh, so understanding that it's just a loan, what are these small businesses going to do? What options do they have? Well, tokenization could be an option that they're going to potentially have to implement in order to get through this uh, uh, situation. So let's read right into it. So this is also just talking about the, the loans here. The Federal Reserve have thrown the kitchen sink at the problem. And when paired with the pending fiscal relief, it's set to reach $6 trillion in total relief injections in the United uh, States economy. So yeah, the $6 trillion, but the problem is only $300 billion is allocated to support a sector of the private industry accounting for 44% of the U.S. economic activity, which is crazy. So the, the, the private industry sector accounts for 44% of the U.S. economic activity, but is only getting $300 billion worth uh, compared to the total $6 trillion in the relief. 
So yeah, they're getting a very, very small fraction of what they should be getting compared to the total economic activity that they're producing on an annual basis. 44% of US economic activity is absolutely huge. They should be getting half of that, right? They should be getting three trillion or uh, two trillion, not 300 billion. Um, that's such a small amount. So this is a problem. Is more debt really the solution for restaurants, mom and pop retailers and other small businesses as they watch their cash flow annihilated under quarantine and social distancing? Probably not. I completely agree. So what's the, what's the possible solution? Enter tokenization. So tokenization in dire straits. Let's read on. Can you get a little bit of coffee and then we'll read it here. All right. So this is about tokenization. Tokenization, tokenized assets have undergone several hype cycles since the meteoric rise of the initial coin offering in 2017. First, utility tokens, then security tokens, and now non-fungible tokens or NFTs, non-fungible tokens, NFT. Most financial institutions tinkered with the concept of security tokens and some have completed audits of tokenized real estate investment trusts or REITs, which are an investment vehicle to invest in uh, commercial real estate, residential. Uh, it's a great way to invest in real estate using equity. Uh, not having to put so much down, but basically let's read on. Uh, however, the problem with tokenized assets have proven more difficult than anticipated, like most things in life. The DeFi ecosystem surge, uh, the DeFi ecosystems surge has spotlighted their potential once again, but the recent ma uh, MakerDAO disaster did not prove any assurance for financial institutions of observing from the sidelines. They have their own problems to deal with now anyways. Totally true, financial institutions are getting squeezed so tight uh, you know, zero interest, uh, people are pulling money out, they are getting squeezed right now. Uh, they're even putting their uh, federal uh, fractional reserve rates to zero, so they need to carry literally zero dollars of whatever money you have in the bank account, and it's 100% legal. Let's read on. However, tokenization may have found its calling card. The dire need of a small business for capital flowing the COVID-19 fallout. Uh, so now we're going to talk about how tokenization could help the small businesses bridge the gap from uh, zero revenue to a point where the economy is back and running and they're able to start back up in you know regular business operations. So brick and mortar stores have the have suffered the most right now uh, as debt. Wait, sorry. Uh, brick and mortar stores that have that are suffering the most right now. Uh, are only offered more debt as a solution to weeks, maybe months of lost revenue. Many are already likely in debt and many, and while many small businesses are likely unaware of the potential tokenization, for them, it may be a release valve if they can't take on more debt. Time to recapitalize. So yeah, tokenization is a form of an asset and it's a digital asset. Let's read more into it. It's different from an equity or a straight bond in a way, uh, but we'll read into, in a real world situation, how would tokenization apply to a small mom and pop shop in order for them to bridge the gap between now and when their company is able to be running as, uh, as normal. So let's read on. To understand the positive implications of tokenization for brick and mortar stores struggling to stay afloat right now, it's best to use a small local neighborhood restaurant as an example. Let's call it the diner. All right. The diner has no customers for a few weeks due to quarantining and people's social distancing. With a financial runaway of only one month, uh, which they only have one month of money to sustain them. And then uh, the second month, they don't have any more money to pay their expenses. And that's going to be in a situation where they're going to be in dire straits. Usually the place is bustling with locals who are loyal customers and friendly uh, and are friends with the owners. Now the place is empty. Accessing the small business loan option from the government could take weeks or months and the $1,200 check from the fiscal stimulus package won't save them and more debt is onerous anyways. Yes, it's $1,200 is absolutely nothing uh, compared to what the cost of running a business is. Uh, but the Diner Hope has, but the Diner Hope hat wait sorry but the diner has hope sorry uh, tokenization 
tokenizing its equity and debt or creating digital tokens represent representations of the future meals at the restaurant at discounted rates. So they're basically creating uh, digital coupons uh, that offer a future meal at the restaurant at a discounted rate. So yeah, they're kind of creating coupons in a way for future meals so then they get cash flow today. Um, and that's kind of the idea of this whole tokenization uh opportunity uh, for an example one so let's say for example the owners of the diner could issue tokens as equity in the business to capitalize on their financial assets different than share of, of equity or they could issue digital tokens representing bonds in the business just like how mid-level or larger corporations perform debt financing with the exception that the insurance occurs on ethereum using nfts what were nfts let's look back they are called non-fungible tokens right uh and they represent uh the contract so they're using ethereum as the smart contract in this whole um structured deal right so this is an option of tokenization they're creating uh tokens as equity or tokens as bonds so then you know in a normal situation it would require a lot of money in order to actually go through a uh, IPO or pre-IPO where it's a public initial public offering and this is a much much cheaper version of of, of basically going public uh, but then it's public to just the community around you not to the entire globe so it's a very different uh, way of providing equity for people who want to invest or even just look for coupons uh, to help out your business. So let's continue reading on. Local customers of the diner could subsequently purchase the NFTs of equity or bonds as a financially prudent move or to be more altruistic and help support the local businesses if they have sufficient capital and aren't experienced outsized returns. So yeah, great for people who want to slowly grow wealth or are just looking to help out the local businesses because they are suffering using a blockchain wallet the diner could even extract the best out of the governance transferability and flexibility of the nfts using token script one of the simpler so one of the simpler solutions for the diner could be just using uh could be just issuing erc20 tokens that represent fixed gift card amounts for use for use once the restaurant reopens again. For use once the restaurant opens again. Reopens again, sorry. So ERC tokens are just uh, Ethereum-based tokens. Uh, they're on the uh, Ethereum-based network. We would basically look like discounted vouchers as customers would, would be purchasing them out of loyalty to the diner and the anticipation of a reduced price on several of their next meals there. The diner relies on the local community's support could even launch an ICO and crowdfunding money, crowdfund money to save the business without high fees and distributed ledger technology platform. So yeah, you could really go um, bare bones and you know just do the most simple and simple stuff uh, in terms of an ICO or crowdfunding. So there's a lot of options here for small businesses who are looking to collect capital through selling equity bonds uh, in a tokenization fashion. So let's continue reading here. Well, without diving into how conventional financial systems have a high barrier to access, the relief package is largely ignoring small businesses and the fragility of the financial system, especially over leveraged corporations, caused the current dilemma in the first place. The advantage lies in the simplicity and rapid rollout on Ethereum. So the huge benefit that tokenization has compared to more traditional ways of allowing the public to invest in your company would be uh, the fact that the current conventional financial system has a high barrier to access and the tokenization, the ability to use blockchain uh, has huge advantages in the simplicity and the rapid rollout uh, of whichever blockchain you're using. In this case, it is going to be Ethereum. So huge advantages uh, on the blockchain side and huge disadvantages in the current financial system that we are in. The diner could roll out tokens within a few hours on Ethereum, notifying the local neighborhood about how to participate and have a somewhat liquid market for the diner F N F NFTs within the day. 
So yeah, we can see few hours. That's crazy. Imagine trying to create some pre IPO IPO event for small business. It would take hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm sure, uh, for lawyer fees and everything involving it. Uh, as well, it take hell of a lot more than in, than a week or two weeks. Uh, bare, like I don't exactly know how long it takes for a company to go from a private company into actually implementing an IPO or a pre-IPO structure where they're actually able to sell in a uh, regulation A plus offering circular or something if they are trying to uh, collect, uh, what's it called, uh, collect uh, accredited and non-accredited investors. You need a series, uh, or sorry, you need a regulation A plus offering circular in order to collect uh, capital from people who are not accredited investors. So yeah, it takes a long time to go through that whole process, but we can see within the Ethereum network using blockchain, it can take literally hours, uh, which is a huge benefit to these small businesses who need money right now. Let's continue on. When the Fed and government stimulus package once again ignores the need of small businesses and instead bails out Wall Street and major corporations, small businesses may have no other option. So this is kind of going on to what we talked about uh, for the positive side in a situation where we have to um, actually increase the systems. We can see right here. Uh, um, okay, right here. Uh, could also accelerate innovation, pressuring crypto to evolve into a complete ecosystem which offers goods and services on a large scale and not just money, right? So this is a potential future and we're seeing it already potentially in front of our eyes where we're seeing the squeeze uh, from these small businesses and they have to do something like we can see right here. Uh, they have to, pr they have to uh, put pressure on them uh, to provide these services because there's no other option. You can see they have no other option. Uh, the only other choice for the diner are to go under, take more debt via an surely slow government lending facility. One resort to tokenization and entering the digital arena of next generation finance. So yeah, you got two options. Go the more traditional way, go through banks, go through government lending, or resort to tokenization and enter the new arena of uh, the digital age. And I think that's uh, the potential opportunity that we could be seeing here. Uh, there is no easy answer to the current crisis and only a few solutions. And at least tokenization may provide a small amount of hope for businesses like the diner. Yeah, I completely agree, but I do think that this is very interesting. And with so many businesses getting squeezed and the current financial system being so broken, I do think that companies, corporate, uh, small businesses will have to resort to different measures in order to try to help themselves because we can see the government is uh, only providing one option here, just basically be in more debt and uh, that's all we can do. Uh, and then this system of tokenization is offering a more uh, long-term uh, positive approach in my personal view and also providing the, the next monetary system to kind of take place where these huge corporations and banks are not going to be the ones to control everything. It's going to be uh, algorithms. It's going to be protocols that don't have a centralized entity and don't require fees on every single transaction uh, like we see in banks. Like obviously blockchains do have fees, but they're so minuscule compared to what banks charge. Banks are just literally there to take your money. They're not there to save you. They're not there to be your friend. They're not there to uh, keep you safe and keep your money safe and to help you out. They're not. They're they're there to make money. You are just another number within their their books to extract money out of slowly with the cost of the account fees, with transfer fees, uh, overdraft fees. If you're taking money. Like, all this shit is just to extract money from you. Um, so yeah, that, that that is the game for the banks. So they're not on your side. They're there to extract as much money as they can and squeeze every dollar out of your wallet. And your job is to not let that happen. So uh, yeah, I do completely believe that tokenization is a great opportunity for small businesses as long as they do it the right way. Uh, I don't know too much about it to be completely honest. So I wouldn't be the person to to help, but uh, obviously there, there are individuals who are well more, uh, a lot more well versed in this space. All right, so this is also attaching on to the uh, kind of expansion of the adoption. Uh, this is going to be a real quick uh, blog post. 
Obviously, we already know this. Uh, Bitcoin likely to become the new normal for Gen Z. So younger individuals are a lot more accepting of this digital currency uh, and cryptocurrencies in general. So which is great to see in more of a global macro sense. Um, I, I know it's a little sad, but let's just look at the situation we're currently in objectively. Um, the coronavirus is targeting, not specifically, but targeting older individuals, right? People who have low immune systems are at most risk, right? So let's say if this gets really, really bad, right? Uh, America has by far the most wealth in the baby boomer generation than anywhere else in the world. They have a lot of wealth stored and the coronavirus is targeting those older individuals. Now, let's say this is worst case scenario and a lot of these older individuals uh, unfortunately pass away due to COVID-19 and there is a huge, huge uh, myriad of, of baby boomers who pass away. Super unfortunate, but let's say this is in a realm of possibilities, a outcome that comes into fruition. Now, what, what happens? All that wealth gets transferred from the old baby boomers into the next generation. A huge, monumental transfer of wealth, right? And these new, younger Gen Z, Gen Xs, these people are way more accepting of blockchain, of cryptocurrency, of digital assets. And there's going to be a huge wealth transfer from more traditional assets, uh, bonds, equities, real estate, and all these older people are dying and that wealth is now getting transferred into the younger generation who more or less better understand cryptocurrencies, who value it, who see the fixed supply capabilities and say, shit, uh, I'm not going to get devalued. This is a deflationary asset. I hold it and actually get benefited for holding. Unlike my US dollar, I've been holding, let's say, for 10 years and I've lost money, especially with negative interest rates. That just doesn't make any sense, right? So the psychology of the younger generation is already adapted to the idea of using digital assets uh, with Cash App, with you know the ability to send money electronically very, very quickly, very efficiently. And this is just that next step. So it's very easy to see that large macro transfer come into play where you're going to see a huge wealth transfer and a huge increase in individuals across the globe who are accepting cryptocurrencies and blockchain as a actual asset that you invest into. Also on a side note, look at Japan. Japan has a crazy uh, inverse demographic uh, pyramid. So there's a shit ton of older people there and not a lot of younger people. Same thing. The older generation has a huge amount of wealth and there is a very limited amount of younger people acquiring and inheriting that wealth, right? So there's going to be a time when a lot of people are going to die who are older and that wealth is going to transfer into a younger generation. The question is, what is that? Uh, where is that wealth going to go? Uh, you know, investors, people have to put wealth somewhere. It could be the US dollar, it could be Japanese yen, it could be gold, silver, equities, commodities, crypto, but wealth has to go somewhere. Oh, I'm getting copyright infringement here. I don't know why. So I really hope I don't get it. It might be because I am looking at a blog post, but on TikTok, I just got a copyright infringement. So I'm just changing where the screen is, but let's continue on here. Uh, you will be able to still see it, but I just got a notification saying it's copyright infringement. If I continue, it will kick me off for another 24 hours and I don't want that. Uh, so I'm sure you know, let's continue on with uh, the uh, blog post. I'm sure you know um, this man right here, Robert. Kiyosaki, I think his name is. Uh, he read. Uh, he wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad series, very very well known. Um, kind of financial literacy educator around the world, uh, and he says lesson five. He he has lessons on TikTok or sorry not TikTok Twitter. Uh, definitely follow him if you have not. Save money? Are you nuts? Why save money when QE and Fed counterfeits is printing trillions of fake dollars, 82 billion in a month to 125 billion a day? Why save when ZERP zero interest policy payer, pays, lose, uh, pays losers zero? Save gold, which is God's money, or Bitcoin, which is people's money. See, so, yeah, I completely agree. Um, not much more to talk on it. Uh, let's just see the quote here by uh, Sylvian Sorel, which is an editor in Bitcoin We Trust, uh, agrees that Generation Y and Z are the most likely to have a positive and positive opinion on Bitcoin. Uh, in a blog post for the startup this week, he pointed out that millennials feel a deep sense of liberation regarding Bitcoin. Uh, he also believes that Gen Z are more likely to pay to view payment 
payment made via smartphone as a norm and will use Bitcoin without even thinking about it, he wrote. Though, and he also said those who will be curious to find out what the current monetary and financial system was likely will be shocked and they will wonder how previous generations were able to accept the fact that a few people systematically decided to devalue what the majority of people owned. This is 100% true. This is the current system we live in. There's a few people in the central banks and, and, and uh, whatever you want to call the, the uh, big brother, the government, uh, you know, the people controlling the major decision, they control how much money is printed. And we talked about that in the Global Macro Update yesterday and saw the balance sheet literally go straight up. This is devaluation of all fiat currencies, not just the US dollar, but you see Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Japan, China, uh, almost all European countries, the ECB, which is, I guess, a central bank for most European countries. But um, they're all printing money, right? And they're all having very, very low interest rates or negative interest rates, and they're printing money. Um, so yeah, this is unprecedented times we live in. This is uncharted territory. It's not like we've done this in the past and it's worked super well. 2008, it's not like it worked and we had an absolute booming economy. It was artificially low interest rates and they print. They had two or th sorry, they had three implementations, implementations of quantitative easing or QE. And in my opinion, this was like giving candy for bad behavior. Uh, it worked in 2008, 2009 to get them out of the financial crisis. So now they're doubling down on what worked and saying, hey, QE worked, low interest rates worked. Why not just double down and do more of what worked last time? And this is exactly what they're doing. But just thinking about it objectively, if you print a trillion dollars, you know, like it's nothing, uh, and double the balance sheet like it's nothing, if you increase the supply exponentially, how can that asset hold value? It's it's simple supply and demand. And people say, yes, it's a dollar milk, milkshake theory and all that stuff. But, you know, uh, in, if you look back in, in, in really long historic time frames, uh, in every major economic expansion, people think that they've recreated value or recreated uh, worth or money. They think, holy shit, we can just print more money. It's great. Uh, and every single time there's been a massive devaluation or of any currency, of fiat currencies, it goes to zero. Inevitably, it goes to zero. You can't print, you know, this much currency and it just hold value over time. It will take time. It does, it's not going to be tomorrow when it starts to devalue, but check out the global macro updates. We give you updates on what our view is, what we're looking for, and how we're looking to position ourselves in this massive, massive devaluation of the uh, current financial system and the current fiat currencies uh, that are being used right now. That's the main bulk of the news. Quick talk about uh, YouTube's ban drives cryptocurrency fans to decentralized alternatives. Uh, right now we're posting on YouTube, but um, I do know that Google and YouTube have been trying to uh, not ban, but try to shadow ban somewhat and censor some of the cryptocurrency blockchain related information, YouTube videos and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, th this is going to be a potential situation that we're going to have to switch to um, if this does get worse. And then just looking at uh, a couple of the different options that we have, I believe this is library, uh, I think that's how you say it, or LBRY. It has a community controlled blockchain protocol that enables users to mine library credits and send them as tips to various creators. That's super cool in my opinion. So they have their own internal currency that they can really uh, just, you know, m mine, I guess, if, if whoever is mining it. Uh, and then also send them to people who you find uh, entertaining, informative, uh, value information, all that stuff. So in my opinion, that is an, a good option for me that I will be looking at. Um, I don't find YouTube to be that bad, but obviously we don't have very many followers on YouTube just yet. So if it does get worse and if we do feel like there is a lag and there is a lack of interest from followers, even though we're providing high quality content, we might switch, why not, right? And we might even go to the point of just posting both and then having a uh, library as well as YouTube and posting videos, uh, the same videos on both platforms, why not, right? Uh, Cross-pollination of different social media platforms is not a bad thing. Uh, BitTube is another one. 
BitTube appears to be more entertaining as it offers live streams, games, groups, and other options. Moreover, the platform has a reward system where it rewards creators and viewers based on the time watched and provides two privacy tokens. Also, BitTube is another option that I think that is a good op uh, good alternative. Uh, and it also has a reward system and you could tip and, and send funds as well. Uh, BitChute, not so much uh, an option in my opinion the service still can delist content as it comes from their centralized server so yeah instantly not super uh, not a super big fan uh dtube built on the ipfs and the steam blockchain and rewards its users with dtc tokens which gives them ad free option gives them an ad free option uh and then also said peer tube features p2p video sharing um i think the two options that I like most is a library in BitTube. And then the last thing here, uh, there are people who are trying to sign a petition who are going against Google and saying, you know, you are censoring cryptocurrency related content across your platforms. And that is not right. So hashtag fork Google calls for the crypto community to boycott Google's services and migrate to alternative decentralized platforms like blogging platforms, Steemit and open source browser Brave. So I already have Brave. I'm not a huge blogger, so I don't use Steemit. Uh, but, you know, looking at these different alternatives, library and BitTube, I think will be an option that we will have to go through if YouTube is censoring content related to cryptocurrencies. So that is going to be the topics of the day. Hopefully you enjoyed them. Now we're going to go straight into the price action. Um, not going to go into questions just yet, but we do have a decent amount of people who are actually coming in and uh, watching our TikTok here. We've got a few people on YouTube, but... If you have any questions, write them in the comments below. I will go over the chart of Bitcoin, the price action of Bitcoin, where it's been, where we currently are now, and what we could be seeing in the future. So definitely stay tuned for that. But uh, just, yeah, quick heads up that uh, if you have a question about what we just talked about or what we're going to talk about, put it in the comments and we'll be sure to answer them. All right. So this is the uh, four hour chart of BTC. Not really going to go over the daily chart because we got a little poke out here. We did get an entry at the zone. Now, I do want to say this is a feeler trade, a very low risk trade that I did not have a super high probability on. This is a counter trend trade. This is, in my opinion, a little bit of a crunchurian trade in my own view because right now I am bearish on short term on the crypto market in terms of where to go in the near future. We saw we've been seeing these nice higher highs and higher lows. But at the end of the day, uh, we've had that massive 50% drop. And in basically every single major consolidation zone after a drop, you see a base get formed. This is not a base. This is a what looks like a rising wedge, ascending wedge, ascending triangle. You can call it what you'd like, but it's a pullback. It's an exhaustion move before the next impulse push to the downside. And it's just a matter of if we're going to break the 5k level of support or not. But at the end of the day, I still view this as a significant pullback looking for the major short that's going to be coming in the near future in my personal opinion. So with that said, that is going to be the main, main bias that I have within the market. And I wanted to give you guys a good understanding of what I am viewing before I jump into what we're trading here. Uh, so in that said, yeah, we did have a tr uh, uh, an entry right here. We saw a lot of buy volume. And on the one hour chart, we saw a breakout and a pullback. And then we saw some consolidation with buyers starting to enter back into the market. So in my opinion, yes, the four hour is a big wick. But on the one hour, we did close at that zone and hold. If you're waiting for you know, confluence of 15 minute, one hour, four hour to all come together, uh, you're not going to enter very many. So we got an entry position uh, just right here. Like I said before, low, very low risk. Uh, you have to, in my opinion, uh, lower the risk reward probabilities because of the higher volatility. And then you're only looking for the major, major pushes to the downside. This is a counter trend trade. So what I'm seeing is key level of resistance all at around $6,900 zone. On the one hour, we made a higher high. Now we're holding the previous level of resistance as a new level of support. Now this is in confluence, not perfectly, but in confluence with our low, our higher low, higher low, higher low. There's definitely a bit of a gap there from where it currently is, but we do see uh, there are higher lows. So I'm hoping and expecting that this is going to be the higher low that we're going to hold. Previous key levels of support, sorry, resistance 
which is now going to be a, a new level of support. This is a break of an ascending triangle pattern. And then the key level of t take profit would be around the $7,700 zone, which is a breakout of the reverse head and shoulders back in 20, late 2019, basically. Um, and this is a very, very important level for Bitcoin, 7,700, 7,600, uh, somewhere around there. So what we're going to be looking for is a key level of supply at that zone, which would mean that we're probably going to be taking profits at that area. We got a risk reward of around 2.4, which isn't bad. I'd like 2.5 to 3.5. That's really solid. The minimum I'd ever really take ever is a two to one risk reward. I'm never really going to go beyond two to one risk reward. It's just not enough reward for the amount of risk I'm taking on uh, personally and if you're risking you know if your risk reward is one to one you're gonna have to win more than 55 60 percent of the time to make any money because you need to pay for your fees cost of commissions and all that stuff so yeah we got a risk uh, reward of 2.4 here so it's not bad um, but the the risk is low i'm not risking a lot on my total uh, portfolio here but the main trade we're looking at the biggest move that's going to be coming up here not the biggest but a the next big big move that we're going to make some serious money on in my opinion is going to be the next down leg we're seeing higher lows right now and continuous higher lows but you're seeing weakening yes you do see a bull a bullish press right here and that's why i think we're going to have a little uh last spill to the upside trying to get as many buyers as they can before absolutely slamming back down. So what's my personal opinion? We made a higher high. Uh, looks like we're able to hold this higher low and then we'll get one final potential push to the upside here. Final squeeze uh, to get the bulls more interested. So then there's a lot of buyers. Um, and then, you know, I, I think uh, that the price will inevitably come back below the 69 or 7K zone and also below the ascending zone that we've been holding for a while. And that is going to be the main area that we're looking to short. We've tried multiple times for this short. Uh, one we did super well on, the other one we got stuffed. We did lower our risk, but at the end of the day, we did lose money. So we tried we're, we tried two attempts at the short now. One we made good money, the other one we lost a little bit of money. So the upcoming short that we're gonna be taking, if it does you know, something like this, is going to be our third attempt at the short to get it to around the 5K zone, somewhere around there, which is gonna be the daily candle, candle closures of the low, which would then potentially form our consolidation sideways. And then we would just form a nice, uh, a little sideways consolidation, which would be good because then that would be a base that we're forming. But right now, this is not a base. This is an ascending zone, ascending wedge. You can call it whatever you want, but it's a pullback, it's an exhaustion phase for potential next move down. It's just a question of that we're gonna break the support or hold it. So that's going to be the main outlook that we're going to have for Bitcoin. Definitely, we've been holding that same bias for a, a while now. And uh, we tried to take some short, did not work out. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, this is going to be our trade plan. We're not looking to short until it breaks our ascending zone of support. At this point in time, we've been stuffed not just once, but twice. Uh, so the sentiment is a little bit more bullish because we've been stuffed so many times. But uh, at the end of the day, we have to be nimble. We have to be flexible. We have to have the ability to adapt quickly to the markets if it does show that bearish opportunity by breaking the ascending level of support. Uh, also looking at VSA and market structure, but that ascending support is going to be the key zone that we're going to be looking for for the potential shift in trend. So yeah, that's going to be BTC. Not going to talk about the one hour too much more because we've really went over everything that we need to. Uh, we can see basically at the one hour chart, uh, we are holding that zone and my stop loss is at 6,500 just below the previous low right here. So we can kind of fiddle anywhere around in there. Uh, let's just talk about the market structure on the one hour and then we'll move on to the supply and demand for Bitfinex. So we see that higher high form and it held on the one hour. Yes, it did uh, have a very, very significant pullback. But one thing I did really like about that push is the fact that we have more buyers into the market on the way up than we have sellers on the way down. So if you're, if you're looking at the price uh, going from, let's say, you know, 68.55 to 7200 and then back to 6855 the distance traveled is the exact same you go from point a all the way up to point b and then you go to point c which is the same level as point a so in terms of distance price movement we've moved the same amount but the buyers were more interested there was more transactions taking place on the way up than on the way down 
So in my view, this is more volume accumulation in my personal view. And yes, it did die off pretty substantially. Uh, we see that huge die off right there. And then now we do see a little bit more sell pressure coming in uh, compared to the buy pressure. But we see uh, increase in buyers right here of this huge bullish push that initial bullish push, we see a lot of buy pressure coming into the market, a lot of volume accumulation, uh, which is this move right here. And then in the second move, which is right here, you see yet again, more buy pressure than sell pressure. So you're seeing more buy pressure than sell pressure on the way up. And then on the pullbacks, you're seeing less sell pressure than buy pressure. So volume accumulation in my personal view is occurring on, uh, on uh, Bitcoin here. But uh, at the end of the day, that's going to be the support zone that we're wanting to hold. If it goes below that zone, we are going to call it quits. This is probably going to be a double top. And then we're probably going to see the price fluctuate back down. And then this short opportunity is going to come. Like I said, we have to be flexible. We have to be nimble. And, uh, you know, this is the short opportunity that we could be seeing here. where We got a break of the ascending zone. And that's going to be the nice short opportunity that we're going to be looking to take. So that's going to be BTC. Not much more to add on that. Um, Hopefully I give you some insights as to where we're looking uh, at this point in time. Yeah, we have a nice long entry, but it's like I said, again, a low risk trade where we don't have the best risk reward 3.4. And the next major move, because this is a contrarian trade, uh, the next move that we're going to have a higher probability, a larger position move is going to be that big short that we're looking for. Alrighty, so that is the talk on Bitcoin. I'm gonna get a little bit of coffee and then we'll discuss the uh, next couple sections of alts. We're gonna go through BNB, XRP, Link, Ethereum, and EOS. Gotta have my morning coffee. All right, let's jump into BNB. If you don't know, BNB is Binance Coin. It's an exchange token. I'm uh, Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not gonna tell you what altcoins to buy, but I really enjoy BNB and uh, it's kind of like having a share in Binance, the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world. Who doesn't love that? Especially if you're buying at $13 when it's gone all the way up to uh, plus 35, plus 39 ish. So huge appreciation potential. But uh, nonetheless, let's talk about kind of the options we have here. And I really like the fact that we already have this structure here, this bearish structure right here, because this is kind of going to be the way I'm looking at Bitcoin right now. Actually, let's zoom right in because this is the trade plan for Bitcoin, right? Literally, exactly. Uh, so right now, let's take away this. And this is where Bitcoin is right now. We have an ascending zone. We have a major, major level of resistance previous level of support that the price is pulling like uh, major zones repel as well as attract the price. So right now we're, we're at the zone right here before the price is making our way to the major level of resistance. We see an ascending zone, which is this zone right here. Hopefully you're able to really easily see that ascending triangle pattern, right? Once you see this, you're like, okay, uh, I don't have a huge amount of room before I hit my resistance, but it broke to the upside. I do have a high probability situation where we're going to hit our resistance again. And if you're able to manage risk and get a nice little two and a half, uh, two to one, maybe risk reward uh, around this zone from the entry to the take profit, and then your risk might be here. That, in my opinion, is a lower position size quality trade. When you're counter trend trading, compared to the macro trend of the downside, you're, in my opinion, wanting to lower the position size. And when you're, when you're trading with the trend, when you have a very high probability situation, you wanna go heavy. You wanna risk your 2% or 1.75, whatever your parameters are, 3%, 5%, I don't care what it is, but you are wanting to go heavy when, in my opinion, you're going with the trend, you have a very, very high probability situation, and also you are just rejecting off a major, major zone with the trend, right? So this is my view of the highest probability situation, uh, which is basically right here. So you see this descending, or sorry, ascending triangle, and you see a move to the upside. This is what we're looking for for Bitcoin. We're not expecting it to have a massive bullish push. We're expecting a little bump up, a little push to the upside, and that's all we're looking for, right? 
to the key level of resistance. Now, what happens after is exactly what we are looking for, right? We, we made a higher high, that's great to see, we got a little bump up, that's nice and dandy, but we're rejecting off the resistance. That's what we're looking for on the $7,700 zone as well. So we're wanting to see rejections off the resistance, not able to make a higher high. And then what do you see? That same ascending zone and horizontal zone, which is now a key level of confluence, very, very key level of confluence, is now going to get broken. Now, this means this is a very, very high probability situation of going to the downside. We've rejected off the major zone of resistance. We squeezed up to that zone. We broke not only the ascending zone, breaking the shift in trend, but also the horizontal zone, creating a market structure lower low, starting a lower high, lower low formation for the bears. And also VSA is looking not too strong for the bulls as well. We see a strong push to the upside, not a lot of buy pressure within this zone, even though we just made a higher high we should be starting to see a bullish push to the upside after this consolidation pattern has broken but we are not seeing it so there's enough validation that the sellers are now in charge that we should be looking for shorts when we break this zone right here so that's going to be the entry we're looking for for our bitcoin trade if it does come to the downside but right now we're in the little bullish push that we are potentially going to be capturing and this is when we have low risk reward this is when we have higher risk reward, continuing the trend, right? Very, very different uh, trade plans that you should be looking into when you are trading different market structures. All right. So yeah, uh, knowing that, literally copy this and put it here, except in this case, I already have long exposure with Bitcoin. I already have exposure to the bump up if it occurs. So what I'm going to do is not trade any other alts because my assumption is it's not going to go very far. I already have exposure to the upside in crypto. So if Bitcoin goes up, high probability situation that a lot of these other alts will go up. So in my opinion, it doesn't make to have it doesn't make sense to have double exposure on the cryptocurrency in the cryptocurrency market when I can only when I only need to have exposure just to the long side for this little bump up in case it does happen and then I make a little bit a little bit of money that's great and then what I'm looking for is that next major leg to the downside where we are going to be looking for shorts not just in Bitcoin but in altcoins as well because they are more volatile um, you can trade not as much size, but they're more volatile. So uh, they do provide some awesome, awesome opportunities as well, especially if you're using OC orders and trying to capture that extension, just that width to the downside. It can make for some unbelievable risk reward parameters. Uh, but yeah, that is going to be the trade that we're going to be looking out for for BNB. Hopefully you are able to understand how this price action looks, how this price action looks. You can even take this off to make it even more uh, similar. So yeah, we, we could see a little push up. This could be the major level. We can see back here, it was a level of support, support, support. Uh, like here, support, 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 new resistance after the ascending triangle broke. Support, 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 ascending triangle could break to the upside, which would be a good confluence with our Bitcoin bullish short-term trade. And then what do we see? A rollover and an absolute demolishing of the bull's confidence. Just fucking catastrophic for the bull's confidence. Boom, and then another dump down. And I think we could see another... Uh, similar aggressive move, which would be a phenomenal, phenomenal trade. Let's say if you're risking, let's say if you enter after the break, uh, you're risking, let's say 5%, right? Y your first take profit, look at it, it's at already 20% and the next extension can go all the way down to 50%. Obviously, you're not expecting 50% moves all the time, but in my personal view, this is another extension of that and we could see another lower low. So from the high here to the low, being super conservative, it could be another 50% drop, 40% drop, and that's fucking conservative. I don't want to sound negative but um i think we could have one more drop coming into the market and yeah i've been having this buys for a while but um we will see if it's going to come into fruition and uh there will be some massive gains to be made if this uh idea comes to life all right so that's going to be bnb ripple is uh forming an ascending wedge in my personal opinion we let's take a picture of it right now this is the four hour not really going to go into the one hour because we're kind of still within the zone not really seeing a break so we got a resistance right here resistance right here resistance right here resistance right here very well respected not really any validation of an anchor point i'd say that this is the anchor point and then you see one two three so very very well respected ascending wedge on a downtrend very very simple trade plan that we're going to have here we're going to look for a potential break of the ascending level of support pullback and a previous level of support and resistance looking at the previous uh 
price action, and then we're going to be looking for shorts once it breaks this ascending zone. Very, very simple. We're going to trade it like basically every other ascending zone. What are we looking for? Market structure, price action, and volume spread analysis, which is VSA. Uh, basically, yeah, XRP is looking like a decent short when it does pull back, right? Uh, if it does make another move to the upside, we could see a higher high form because of the ascending resistance forming the progressively higher highs. So we could see a potential higher high form, uh, which would make sense and which would be actually a positive thing because Bitcoin would be acting favorably. And that would be the, the potential last move before the major leg down. So uh, a little too early to tell on XRP, no real trade that we're gonna be looking for, but it is slowly setting up to be a great opportunity for a short where we're gonna be making some unbelievable uh, potential profits here if we're able to hold down for the next couple legs here. All right, Link is uh, another opportunity here. We see that uh, it's getting squeezed by a descending zone, not an ascending zone. So if we do get a little bullish push, we could see an opportunity for Link not really wanting to trade too much, but within the pattern, you could see a little 9% move, not really little, but a 9% move from the resistance here up to the key level of resistance at 2.6. So just within the, uh, within the price action pattern, you're looking for those small high probability moves, breaking the squeeze, probably gonna come up to the next resistance right around here. Um, you know, on the one hour chart, we see that this resistance is not super, super well respected, but it is something to consider. On the four hour, I think it's a lot more um, cleaner in terms of the price action, in terms of uh, how this structure is looking. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I think Link could get a little bit up if it does break the squeeze, but I am looking for that next major zone to the downside. Ethereum, very, very similar structure. All these alts are in a very similar structure. Um, hopefully you understand the system that we are um, implementing and our strategy that we're implementing over many, many uh, crypto market updates, crypto market updates and global macro updates. And uh, EOS is the last one. Again, very similar structure, right? We were, we're, we, we see a very similar price action structure within all the different alts. Look at BNB. Ascending zone horizontal resistance. Look at XRP. You could draw a horizontal zone of resistance, but you see an ascending zone. This is a wedge. BNB is a little bit different. Link very similar. Ascending zone horizontal level of resistance. Uh, Ethereum obviously very very similar, and then EOS very similar as well. So we can see a lot of these alts are going to be very similar in terms of how they break out. So what we're going to be looking for is going to be looking at Bitcoin, seeing what it does, seeing its price action, seeing if it's seeing if it's going to break to the upside, creating a higher high. We already have exposure there, right? Uh, but uh, what we're really going to be looking for after, if it does break to the upside, is going to be that short trade. So uh, that's going to be my view of the markets. Hopefully you got something from it. Um, at this point in time, I do think it is uh, safer to just be more patient and look for the larger moves because you know, if you're day trading short time frames on all this shit, it's really hard to trade during um, such volatile, unpredictable times. And my opinion, it makes sense to lower the time frame, lower the position size a little bit, and trade with the trend and uh, just stick with the larger moves, which uh, it looks like we could be seeing right here. So, um, yeah, that is the crypto market update. We will answer every single question on YouTube and TikTok, but I will finish the video off here. So thank you very much for attending the crypto market update for the day. We really appreciate it. And if you have any questions regarding our services uh, as Performante, or if you have any questions regarding trading or investing in uh, cryptos, definitely let us know in the comments below. Also, we have a Discord uh, with over 1,600 people that you can join absolutely for free. And we post daily updates for uh crypto markets and also for global macro updates as well. Oh, uh, there's the next previous global macro update. And then we also do Bitcoin market updates and alternate altcoins as well. So uh, definitely check that out if you don't know yet. And until next time, have a good one. I will keep the YouTube and TikTok live as well. So definitely don't leave. I will answer all your questions. All right, so that is the completion of the crypto market update. I hope you enjoy it. I will now go and answer all the questions on TikTok. Uh, if you have any questions regarding what I just went through, definitely now is the time to uh, to act here. So I'll go over 
Got a decent turnout today, actually. 31 people. That's awesome to hear. So, uh, yep, answer or uh, have any questions in the comments, and I'll be sure to ask uh, answer them. I don't like that the Fed can print money at will. Yeah, I don't think many people like that at all. Uh, you literally have no control over the value of your currency. Um, you think that we live in a world where... Uh, governments and central banks are on your side. They are not. They they are there to extract money from you. Um, it's a tax. Inflation is a tax on savers and just doesn't make sense. I completely agree. I think that uh, we do need to find a different monetary system that allows a decentralized collective group of people to understand the monetary inflation rates or even have an algorithm have uh just like have an algorithm control it like bitcoin uh you have no human entity saying we should raise rates we should lower rates we should print money we should lower uh the amount of money in circulation like that's only gonna have failure um yeah i it, i think it will end uh don't worry it's gonna be very painful but i think it will end fiat currencies will inevitably turn to dust and become absolutely worthless worthless and it's just a matter of uh, what new monetary system are we going to be implementing to take over the current one we have? Uh, are you saying the dollar will go to zero? Yes, I am saying the dollar will go to zero. The, do the US dollar will have zero value at some point in time in my lifetime, in my personal opinion. Look at how much money they're printing. They're going to print way more. Um, yeah, I completely agree. It, it will get annihilated. Maybe not in a year, maybe not in two but yeah, the US dollar, in my opinion, will go to absolute zero. It is completely worthless. If they can print a trillion dollars every single day, what makes that have any sort of value or any sort of merit to have value? They can't. You can't print worth. You can print paper, but you can't print worth. That's from production, productivity, and you can't print that. You got to create it. You're not the only one getting banned from YouTube regarding crypto. Yeah, that, that's why we talked about uh, looking for other alternatives. And I think I will actually look into it today. Um, and it's good to have cross-platform pollination, being a, having the ability to go on different social media platforms and uh, create a brand on, on different, uh, basically, social media platforms instead of just YouTube. I think it's a good idea. Thank you, Philip Molly, for sending me a TikTok. I still have no idea what these do. Like, people send me stuff, but I have no idea what it is. But anyways, thoughts on buying gold to hold on to. I completely think that gold is something that you should be having in any portfolio. Now, I'm not a financial planner. Uh, take this information as a complete random stranger who you've met randomly and his opinion. These are not facts that you should abide by you should always do your own due diligence and you should never ever rely on another person to give you information and that is of information you value do your own research why are you buying gold why are you holding silver um reasons behind it you know that's good. well that's what you're looking for but yeah uh, i do think that holding physical boolean like this this is a silver uh 10 ounce bar like holding this stuff uh where it's physical and you could hold it, you could touch it, it weighs a lot, and I can move it with me anywhere. Uh, having this type of uh, asset that you can physically hold is very important. And also, if you do invest in cryptocurrencies at all, uh, having this or some type of nano ledger or some type of hardware wallet that allows you to store crypto uh, for yourself is super important. Don't if you're if you're investing in cryptos, don't put it on Coinbase and hold it there. Don't put it on some exchange that you think is safe because. There's been times, look at last year, uh, Quadratic Quadra CX or something, a Canadian cryptocurrency exchange uh, completely went belly up. The CEO of the exchange uh, died. I think it was just a fucking grab and run, uh, everyone's money, and now he's living somewhere with all this crypto, uh, but it happens. So trust yourself. Don't trust banks. Don't trust uh, cryptocurrency exchanges. Don't trust anyone. Uh, go straight to the source. Go to the Ledger website. Buy it off the official website and trust yourself. You can be your own bank at this point. All right. Uh, buying gold and buy gold and silver hyperinflation is here. Yeah, uh, I don't think hyperinflation here is here just yet. I do think that uh, there is more demand for dollars in the next lay down uh, where more and more people are going to be selling equities. Remember, if you're selling gold, silver, oil, uh, any real commodity, 
it's going to be measured in US dollars. It's not measured in rupees. It's not measured, measured in yen. It's not measured in Canadian dollars. It's measured in US dollars. So when people are selling things, they, they're buying US dollars, right? So there's going to be even more of an influx in US dollars. And then there's going to be a overweight amount of investors in US dollars. And that is when the hyperinflation will begin. The market is not to be mean, but is trying to cause the most pain possible. So they're going to drive everyone to the US dollar thinking, oh my God, it's a safe haven asset. We've created the perfect currency. The dollar metric theory is in full effect and we can literally print as much as we want. Uh, modern monetary policy allows us to do that. All is bullshit in my personal opinion. And uh, a lot of people will be over weight on US dollar and then the inflation will be seen here. Look, I'm looking for CPI numbers, uh, consumer price indexes, seeing the cost of the everyday goods uh, in a grocery store being bought. Once I see, start to see the increase in the CPI numbers and the decrease in the dollar index, uh, which is measuring 60% uh, against the euro, 15% yen, and then the rest against other fiat currencies. Once you start to see the US dollar go down it's 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 strong right now once you see that go down and then inflation start with cpi picking up then there's a solid solid fundamental analysis to go with whatever technicals that you see on the chart and hopefully they coincide together that would be fantastic but that's what i'm going to be looking for for the shift in trend also talking about commodities and precious metals you're wanting to look at the gold and silver ratio it is the highest point it's ever been in it well i don't know history but in centuries in many, many, many decades. So silver is super undervalued at this point in time. But what the gold and silver ratio is going to be telling you is the speculation and the confidence of the commodities. Now, look at gold as the stable uh, asset and silver is the more speculative precious metal. So when you start to see silver uh, increase in values. If you see silver appreciate quicker than gold at, at a fast rate, you're seeing more speculation in the precious metals sector, which is bullish, which is super bullish for commodities. And that's when you're wanting to really, really look for high probability, you know, weighted positions where you have a good solid amount of money behind them. So if the leg up does come that you're going to be very, very uh, profitable from that move. So yeah, uh, XRP hasn't dropped yet. No, it hasn't. Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, I do think it'll come inevitably. How do you buy gold? Where do you buy gold? How do you buy gold? I go to Boolean. Uh, uh, what's it called? Um, it, it's in downtown. I, I live in uh, British Columbia in the lower mainland. So I just go to a, a Boolean dealer. Uh, very, very reputable. And then you can just buy Boolean from there. You get a big suitcase. Make sure no one's following you when you buy lots and uh, do it in smaller amounts. Um, but yeah, just make sure that they are reputable, make sure that they have history, make sure that um, uh, you, you, you're doing your due diligence, basically. That's all the information I can get you. Forget gold, buy Bitcoin. <laughs> um, in my personal opinion, I think it is smart to have a little bit of diversification in the anti-fiat asset class, which I look at precious metals and most cryptocurrencies, basically. Uh, some cryptocurrencies have more smart contract utility uh, where you're looking at more of like a supply chain or whatever. But uh, some cryptos are mainly just for the fact that they are another form of payment. Uh, Dash, Monero, Monero uh, great, privacy, great privacy tokens. Um, but um, yeah, I do think having some diversification in precious metals is not really a bad thing. Uh, Kitco. Where do you buy gold and sold? Where do you go? Where do you where do you go? Yeah, I, I'm not going to take the exact location of Vancouver uh, in the lower mainland. But yeah, I don't know where you live. I have no idea. But um, I buy them physically. Like I go to the brick and mortar location to buy, to, to, to purchase bullion. I don't go online. Um, I don't believe in digital currencies. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, it's not like, uh, just something to remember though. A uh, blockchain is not, just digital currency. It, it really isn't. Um, you know, even looking at it as just a distributed ledger technology uh, or even a privacy technology, you can have massive disruptions while not changing the financial sector at all. It's just 
blockchain has so many different capabilities that right now people are like still having a hard time. Like, what do we even do with this like information? Right. But, um, yeah, you might not believe in digital currencies, but I think you should believe in the adoption into more supply chain management, even looking at like, uh, for example, political situations where you can vote off your phone due to encrypted blockchain services and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, it's, it's way more than just a currency that's digital. Um, it is foundationally going to change how commerce is going to be playing out and how supply chains are going to be playing out and how the medical system is playing out. The medical system is so archaic still. Uh, like nurses write prescriptions on, on paper with pens. Like that's super fucking old school. Um, it just doesn't make sense. People's medical records are, are written down on paper and then someone has to read it and put it into a computer and type letter by letter, word for word. Like that is so archaic. It doesn't matter uh, what you think that this has to change. Um, and, and blockchain, uh, distributed ledger, you know, it doesn't need to be decentralized because it could be a private ledger, but decentralized ledger uh, that can literally store like unlimited information and organize it in a way that's able to be collected very easily will be implemented in our world. Um, I can't say 100%, but yeah, I, I have a, a very, very... In my opinion, it's a high, very, very high probability situation that it, occur, it will occur. Um, I don't believe when I buy gold, I buy gold mining company stocks. Yeah, th that that works as well. Obviously, they will appreciate if gold appreciates because their cost of operation will continue to stay still. Uh, actually, it's probably a good idea because the cost of production is actually decreasing substantially because the cost of oil is is lowering substantially. So all their equipment is requiring less money to fuel the same amount of time, right? If it costs $100 to fuel your your gas or your, your, your truck, and then now, uh, you know, gas is half off, it just costs half the money to continue operations. And then in the same time, if we see gold increase, well, then your revenues is increasing and your cost of operation is decreasing. So your profit margins is exponentially increasing because they're opposing each other. So yeah, uh, if this current situation continues, yeah, uh, gold mining sauce is gonna fucking skyrocket. But like I said before, I do like uh, able. I like being able to hold my assets. I do think that that's a great opportunity. I'm not really a equity trader too much. I like trading asset classes that are more fluid and don't have massive gaps. So I uh, like trading uh, contract differences or CFDs. I like trading crypto, which is a 24-hour market, and uh, CFDs are not 24 hours, but uh, they are basically 24 hours other than the weekend. Um, so yeah, that's why I like trading CFDs instead of uh, equities. It's just, I like swing trading, I don't like gaps. You can't manage gaps. You, you, you literally cannot manage gaps. You cannot. You can't put a stop loss, you can't put a market order. You can't manage gaps, period, end of story. So I, if I can't manage my investment or my trade, I don't wanna touch it. It's very, I'm very, very focused on being able to know exactly how much I'm losing if I'm going to enter any single trade and I don't have that capability in stocks. Uh, wonder, lust, mom, buy physical gold. Yeah, I completely agree. Physical assets, gold, silver, great, op great option in my personal opinion. All right, what platform is this? This is called tradingview.com. Absolutely free to, uh, free to use. It's, in my opinion, the absolute best trading software, charting software that is currently out in the markets. Think or swim? Nope, it's called TradingView. And what stock is this? Uh, we were just mainly talking about the cryptocurrency markets for the most part in this video. But in the next video, which is going to be going over the global macro update, we will be going over the S&P, or more specifically, the SPX 500 USD, which is the CFD, the contract for difference for the S&P 500. Uh, so we will be going over the equities market in general, as well as gold, silver, gold and silver ratio, and the, U, uh, the, the W2I crude oil. So a lot of global macro stuff to talk about in the next video. Stay tuned for that. Uh, any mic, Uber, question mark. I don't really know what you mean. Uh, in terms of investing in Uber, I personally would not invest in Uber. I think self-driving cars are too close. Um, and that would obviously completely eliminate all need for Ubers. Um, you know, even looking at Tesla, uh, they can have a self-driving car. And if the technology advances at a rate that it has been, um, I think that's going to be a better play in terms of the long-term outlook for the investment instead of Uber, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, 
I'd have to look at the price action as well. Um, but right now, definitely not looking at uh, any investments as of yet. Uh, Russell asked, what is your overall thoughts on the market activity as of the recent weeks? How long, how low will the S&P go again? So uh, I think the best video that you can watch, I explain the S&P, I explain my thoughts on where it could go, why I think so in this video. Let me just get it right here. Um, right here. When will the next drop be in the stock market? This is the YouTube video that we made one day ago, and this will give you, in my opinion, in a really good breakdown of uh, not just the 2001 and 2008 crisis, uh, the stock market crash, but we'll break down a system we use to understand the bear market in those two situations and what we're going to try to do in this current situation. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna sum up a 51 minute video in a matter of minutes, but if you're looking to know how we're trying to trade this and what we're doing to uh, create an opportunity here, look at when will, uh, when will the next drop be in the stock market. Uh, in short, I think that we're gonna have another major two drops we just had our first leg down and we're going to have another two significant drops. So that's what we're going to be capturing, looking at TVX, looking at shorting the S&P using CFD. So yeah, def definitely a lot of options here. All right, let's continue on here with the questions. A lot of people joining. That's great to see. Got 35 people on. That is terrific. Um, keep the questions coming. I'm happy to answer all of them. Not a problem. And like I said before, these are completely just my opinions. They're not fact. It's just me giving you my two cents on whatever you're asking me. All right, let's continue on with the questions here. We got another question from Wander, or not really a question. Rumors are the Fed and Treasury being merged. Gold back dollar coming. Fed and Treasury being merged. Wow. Um, I got to look into that. I, I haven't heard of that. Um, gold back dollar coming. That obviously would just explode the value of the dollar. Because, okay, let's say if gold back dollar is coming, they got to match up each dollar with a, an amount of gold. Um, and right now, there's way too much US dollars in circulation. So, uh, Either the value of the U.S. dollar goes down substantially, uh, or the U.S. Uh, sorry, the gold goes up substantially. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to look into that. That would be crazy. Uh, is buying like JNUG a good buy right now? Uh, uh, I'm not. I, I'm not going to give you any information on when exactly to buy. Um, Got to do your own due diligence. If you do want to know our opinion of the price action of gold, check out our every weekday global macro update that we post on our Discord, which is right here, and go to the high quality analysis, and we post a global macro update and a crypto market update every single weekday. So yesterday, we made a global macro update talking about the 6.6 .6 million unemployment claims. Wow. Okay, so I just got kicked off uh, TikTok for, in my opinion, doing nothing. Um, that's super lame. Um. Well, I'm gonna have to talk to TikTok, but anyways, I'll message them. Um, that was a little bit odd, but uh, thank you very much for the three people who are currently on YouTube. I unfortunately couldn't say any, there was like 37, 38 people on TikTok, but uh, yeah, they just randomly kicked me out. Um, I'll message them today, I don't know why. I just was showing something on Discord. I think it might've been, I don't know. Like this isn't something that would be bad posting in, in my opinion. I don't know. I'll, I'll message them. Um, I'll see what's happening, but uh, that's the completion of the crypto market update. I really hope you enjoyed it. We unfortunately were unable to actually go through all the comments. Um, so that's a little bit unfortunate, but uh, for those who stayed, thank you very much. I will close the crypto market update now. Uh, stay tuned if you would like to 
see the global macro update, I will be eating some lunch first before I get into that, but um, it will be coming shortly. So thank you very much for watching. We really, really do appreciate every single ver viewer who does watch, who engages, who's in the Discord, who's talking. Um, yeah, we've really created an awesome community where people can interact, have discussions in an unbiased way without any, um, you know, overarching bias of, you know, you have to do this, you should do that. Um, we're pretty open. We are trying to remain an unbiased discord that is friendly, respectable, informative, educational, and actionable. We can actually get something of value where you can use it in your own trading. Uh, and that's our goal. So uh, hopefully you're able to get some value from this video. It is the completion of this video. Hour and 20, a little bit longer, but uh, we did go over some really key news topics in my opinion. So thank you very much for watching. And until next time, have a good one.